Welcome back, everyone. We're working on object-oriented programming in Java based on the sololearn.com's tutorial on Java. We're looking at classes and objects. And in this case, we last, last video we talked about methods or behavior. In this one, we're going to talk about attributes. In this case, an attribute would just be a variable related to your object. So if we look at our dog Fido, one of the things you're going to know is that usually when you get a dog, you want to name the dog. So we're going to go ahead and create a variable for our dog, and we're going to call it, well, name. And in this case, uh, we're going to follow the tutorial. I'm going to go back just a step, and I just want to show you what we're going to do. We're going to look not just at defining our attributes, but we're going to look at the modules 5, 6, and 7, and I'm going to combine all the information from all three of these. So if you haven't gone through it, I highly recommend you go through these three modules first, and then we'll come back and put it all together. I tend to like to put things in place the way they should be to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to define, or we're going to, um, yeah, we're going to define our attributes. Another name for attributes are fields, just so you know. And we're going to make them private. So the first thing we're going to do is choose private. By making it private, we will not be able to directly access the value of this. I said we're going to make it a name, but we have to determine the data type. So in this case, it's going to be a string, right? Because when we name our dogs, we name them with names, with characters. So we need to store that as a string. We're going to go ahead and do another one. We're going to give it an age. We're going to go ahead and set the as an int. We're going to go ahead and do age on here. Now we have two of these. You may decide later on you want to add other ones like breed or uh, hair color or whatever. So for now, we're just going to stick with these two. And what we're going to do is uh, we are going to create some methods that allow us to access these two variables. Now, before we do that, I just want to point out that when you define your attributes, it is best practice to put it right after you declare your class. So usually the order in which we do this is we put any attributes first, and then we add our constructor method. And um, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and do our accessor and setter methods. Um, so we're going to talk about name to begin with. So the first thing we want to do is we want to be able to set the name. So that's called a setter method. So we're going to go ahead and make this public. And in this case, to set it, um, this will be a method that doesn't return anything. We're just going to change a value. So we're going to make this void. And we're going to write set name like so. And this is the standard way to set a name. Now I'm going to pause here for just a second um, to go over how we name it. Set always lowercase s. And then we combine the two words using camel case. So the n is capitalized. Now, if we're going to set the name, we need to have a string variable to set it. So we need it in here, in the parentheses, we're going to create a parameter, and uh, we're just going to put string name, like so. Now, the first thing you're probably going to be thinking is, wait, this variable is called name, but we have a variable called name over here, and that is true. In this case, the user is going to send us a string for name. So the way that we distinguish between what the user sends versus the actual value of our dog is we're going to use a keyword called this. This dot name. So this dot name is referring to the name of the dog in this particular class. And we're going to set it to what the user sends it. In this case, that string called name. So this variable name is here. And this variable name is this.name. Notice how I said this name. Anyway, so let's go ahead and try to set the name. So we're going to go on here, and we already said Fido says speak, so let's do something right here. Before we even have Fido speak, let's go ahead and set that. I'm going to do Fido dot. The first thing you're going to see is there it is, set name. So we're going to go ahead and double click it. I'm going to set the name to Fido. And now, in, when Fido set, speaks, instead of saying Fido says, what we can do here is we can write Fido.name, 
plus says message. Now, we have a problem with name. What's our problem? Well, name is a private attribute. So, we can't just use name. We're going to have to send out the name using a, um, um, a getter method. I'm sorry. We're gonna, we need to be able to access or get the value of the name. So, we're also going to make it public. And in this case, name is a string. So, we have to indicate it's a string. And it's get name, like so. And this is a very straightforward thing here. It's just return name. It likes it now because I've returned my value. And name is in the form of a string. So, it's sending out the right data type. So, now instead of Fido.name, it's Fido.getName like so. Fido.getName says whatever the message is. Let's go ahead and run it. There we go. Notice Fido.getName gets us Fido. So now we're able to set the name. We're able to get the name. Now that we can do that, I'd like you to try thinking about how would you get and set the age. So I'm going to give you a moment to code your function or code your class and go ahead and do the same thing for age. And in my next tutorial, you can see if you did it correctly or not. So I'll be looking forward to uh, uh, more coding, and I hope you are too. So stay tuned for the next video, and we'll go ahead and check out how we do age and look at some more object-oriented programming.